Welcome to the exclusive final round coverage. This is the 2014 European Masters Tournament at Jarva Disc Golf Park in Stockholm, Sweden. You're watching Spin TV. I'm Jamie Thomas, and today I am joined by the 2010 world champion, Eric McCabe. He's going to run through this commentary and let you guys know what's going on on the course at this awesome tournament, this legendary course. There may not be a green jacket involved, but there's a whole lot of prestige, so stick with us. So we're starting out on hole one. Hole one is the only par five on the course. It's 301 meters. And the tee for the major layout is actually the driving range for Yarva Disc Golf Park. What do you think about that? I think it's great. Uh, it's a very, pretty easy par five actually. It's not that hard to get your birdie four on. It's a little more difficult to get the eagle unless you have a really big arm. But I really enjoy the uh, starting out on the par five. It definitely allows the spectators to kind of see, and you can have your name called, and you get all the pomp and circumstance of a major run the proper way. And we're going to start out with KJ Naibo. He's our leader, up by two. He's played really solid golf. If if uh, fairways hit was a statistic in disc golf like they keep in golf, he'd been 100% for the weekend. He throws a nice little hyzer there, in and up by the trees. And uh, Paul McBeth's going to take an interesting route. He's actually going to go for the roller. What do you think about that? That's It's very interesting. I, I had heard that he was throwing a roller on this hole, and uh, it's it doesn't seem like that's his strong point. I'm not sure why he went with the roller, maybe just confidence, but this hole's really just an easy hyzer off the tee. And you can see a lot of people even diss down, take a mid-range. I even saw a couple putters off the tee to get it nice and in the center. And it, he had trouble working it out, but this time it worked out really well for him. We're going to see he's down... Uh, the hill, the slope to the right, which is going to give him an easy mid-range shot to the green, and you can't do it much better than that. And uh, Ricky, the Ricky tends to throw these really high hyzer flips, and you know this can work out for him really well here with the way this fairway is shaped. Absolutely, and I mean the only trouble on this hole really is uh, deep left, the OB that's on the the left side of the fairway. So Ricky, uh, it looks like he turned that one over a little bit into the trees, but. He'll probably have a window to, to save his birdie. Yeah, as you're saying, the par five, most of these guys with the size arms that they have and the accuracy that comes with being a top player in the world, it's easy to get down there four five. And here we're going to come with three-time world champion Nate Doss. He's going to go off the tee, throw a nice little smooth hyzer. He puts it a little wider. It looks like he's for, looking for the skip to get back mm -hmm. to the center. That's a good shot. That's going to be just fine right where he needs to be. And like we said, this shot, this hole is all about the second shot. And Nate will go first. Nice and center on the fairway. Second shot. Moving a little bit early. Moving a leftward. little bit. There's, there's some trees on the left side and some OB. But uh, that's going to give him at least a look for the eagle. And you can't do much better than that going into the final round. If you're looking at an eagle, then you started your round off pretty well. Uh... Carl Johan Naibo here is going to have a little bit of a tricky shot. He's going to have to uh, get it out wide on the hyzer to miss the trees that are directly in front of him, and it looks like he's going to have to lose a little bit of distance potential because of that angle. Yeah, it looks like he threw a pretty flippy disc, too, to get it to ride. Uh, Ricky has lined up a shot in any shot, and this is a tough. This is probably the only one where you're not going to reach the green in three with that kind of shot. Absolutely, but that's, uh, that's a good placement shot by Ricky, and he'll have a probably pretty easy up and down and what do you think about this placement from Macbeth right here that's a ridiculous roller now I see why he throws the roller off the tee because he is McBeast and uh, if you can throw a roller that far that accurate do it and followed up with a rock three shot gives you a drop in eagle not a word you, not a sentence you get to say a whole lot not but a lot when you get to say it then you know your round is starting off well there's a nice up shot by Ricky another touch Annie and uh, KJ Naibo with Nice little putter. Should be easy from there. Yeah. And here's Nate Doss. He's going to look at an eagle putt. He does have a window in between what could be jail if you're just five feet to the left or right. Pretty good run there. Not bad off the top. I'm sure he wanted that thing to fall, but, I mean, uh, like we said, a birdie four to start your round isn't a bad thing. And just takes a little bit of correction. It's, it's better to miss high than low, as most people will tell you. And we're going to have some cleanups here. Everybody playing the hole under par on the lead card to start out. And we're going to go to a different kind of hole starting out on hole two. 
Um, it's a 97 meter par three, but it plays very uphill oh, and you yeah. have to get over a row of hedges. So tell me about the trickiness of this next hole. Uh, hole two is probably one of my favorite par threes on the course. Uh, it's, it's uphill and it's always windy on this hole it seems. And uh, the trees you can see in front of you are gonna be jail. So if you throw low and you hit those trees, you're looking at hopefully saving your par. Uh, you really just want to so throw something a little understable, hyzer flip up if you're a right hand backhand player and uh, let it fly pretty straight and land on the top. And the risk is you do have to watch your speed when you land on top of that hill because it is a steep hill. And if you catch edge and roll back down, you're definitely not looking at a birdie putt, which most of these guys are going to want to get. Yeah, it's a pretty relatively easy sidearm as well for uh, those players that have that shot. And Paul is going to get a little early on it and get a kick, but he will still have a look. And KJ is going to put a really nice... Like you're saying, understable shot, nice and easy hyzer flip, circles edge putt. That's what you want right there. And Ricky looks to be lining up the sidearm. Probably one of the best sidearms in the game. Right over, and you can see the hedges, they, they go down from the player's perspective on the left side, so he just snuck it over the lower edge, and uh, that's a good way to look at the hole and just place a precision shot. Absolutely, and from the tee, you can only see the flag on top of this the, the, the basket here. You can't see the whole basket from the tee, so that gives you kind of perspective on how high those hedges actually are. And Nate just, just misses getting on top of the hill, but he will have a putt, and uh, that shouldn't be too much trouble for him. Uh, Paul's going to look to be about 40, 45 feet out and try to not give away a stroke that he just earned off that eagle. And just misses it. Just a little low left. And this is the level putt. This is where you want to be up on the ledge looking to get a birdie. Take another one back from Paul here. Just off the cage. I wonder if he had a little some butterflies going on here this early in the, the major. It could very well be. And uh, you can see that he's he's usually very money from that distance. He was making all those putts yesterday and the day before. KJ played the last two rounds with one bogey and one ace. So that tells you the, the work and the numbers he had to put to get into the position yep. he's in right now. And they should Still be cleaning up here, a couple birdies, a couple pars. Nice, relatively easy tap ins. And uh we're gonna go to Another birdie. So this is really interesting because you're going to start out with a par five and then you're going to start out with two holes that you really need to just park. Yeah. Coming right up. Yeah. And this is a tough pin because it's tucked so far back on this hole three, 102 meter par three that you really have to watch your speed coming in because there's out of bounds both behind and to the right. Yeah. Uh, tell me about the strategy of this one. A lot of players are going to be throwing sidearms or the big hyzer over the trees here on the right. Uh, for me, I chose the mid-range turnover shot because it comes in a little softer and it hits flatter and it won't tend to skip as much. So it's easier to hit that line for me. Uh, you know, like I said, most of these guys are gonna just throw a big sidearm up there and, and hopefully skip up close. Including Nate Doss, who has a sidearm, but you don't see it quite as much. He's a predominantly backhand player and he's gonna leave that one a little short and he's gonna have about a 35, 38 footer right there. And this is, uh, here's Paul who uh, Jeremy Colling said has the most underrated sidearm yep. in the game. I thought that was a pretty fitting description yep. for the Beast. And Looks here's like KJ. KJ. He's going to know what you're talking about. Throwing the mid-range turnover. Beautiful. Which I like. You just put it on that angle and let it go. Beautiful rock shot. Going to slide right up, and he's going to have a look at two. The crowd likes it. He's inside the circle. And this is a tester putt, and... Uh, Nate's had a couple tester putts so far, hole one and hole three, you know. How do you, when you get into that mentality, when you're driving a little bit short, you know, how do you balance between not wanting to overthrow the disc but wanting to just get a little extra juice out of it? Man, you just gotta, you just gotta buckle down and be confident with your shots. I mean, Nate's a three-time world champion, so he knows what he's doing out there. Uh, it's just a matter of, of hitting that first one and then moving from there. Sometimes it seems just being about getting in rhythm mm -hmm. when you need to and, and starting it before it gets too many holes into the round, especially when you're playing against the caliber of talent uh, that all these guys have. Yeah. And we're going to see some birdie putts there. Everybody except Nate Doss will birdie that hole. And we're going to move on to hole four. Hole four. Short. We had an ace. Yes. The cross pin was one. 
and uh, we're gonna see somebody take that route and we're gonna see some other routes and the very interesting route is going straight at it when the basket is up on a hill like it is uh, tell me about the advantages and disadvantages of these routes uh, you know the big hyzer route around the tree here on the right side is it's kind of risky because it comes in at the hyzer angle it has a tendency to hit and roll away as we're throwing like a putter shot flat into the side of the hill, tend to just skip up to the basket, kind of like Paul's doing right here. And that's a great shot. Going to leave him pin high, probably about 15, 18 feet out. Should be, you know, easy, done in his sleep kind of putt. This is definitely a hole. Well, there's your hyzer that we're seeing. Uh, this is definitely a hole that you want to walk away from with your deuce. And when you take that big hyzer like KJ did, you just got to have... Uh, tremendous control over the speed of the disc and as you can see that was executed to perfection right yes. there and Nate's gonna come in and he came in a little hot even though he took the inside route he got a nice little tree backstop so he will have uh, a chance to make up for that last putt and and get a two on this one and this is a pretty pretty tricky putt actually it doesn't look too bad but if if he happens to miss that it's probably gonna roll down this hill and that's one of the big things, you know, how much do you have to think about that and how much do you have to put that out of your mind when you come to a basket up on a hill? You pretty much got to put it out of your mind, especially if you're inside the circle. You just got to know that you're going to make that putt. You can't have the negatives in your mind. If you have the negatives, you know, nothing's going to go right. And that's one of those things that just comes down to the number of hours that these guys have practiced and put the time in and they just know how the distance and the elevation feels and they can put that in every time. So hole five, we're gonna to come to the first par four on the front nine, and this is an angle. You're actually having to lay up and then go around the corner. Uh, tell me about this one. This is a good hole, I really like this par four. Uh, it's very elevated tee, OB on the right side, and you just really wanna throw at the tree line there on the right and kind of skip up the side of the hill here, and then you have a nice straight look at the pin. And we're gonna see a couple of different approaches to this. Uh, we have Ricky and uh, Paul here. They're going to take a more overstable disc, hang it out right over the gallery, and get some skip so that they've got the angle uh, looking back down the tunnel towards the pin. And then we have KJ, and he's going to take a little softer approach. And I wonder if uh, him being in closer proximity to this course, he knows a couple little tricks that these other guys don't. Yeah, I mean, it, it, this looks like he's just throwing a mid-range out there. And, and, you know, that's a great shot. I, I tried that in practice, and uh, it, I would sail past it a little bit. And as we're the overstable driver, I would skip up the hill, and uh, it's less forgiving. So that's why I, I chose the overstable driver. So we've got, to, we've got to ask you, I wonder why you don't see people throwing the big forehand aggressive shot. Is it just too early in the round? I think it's way too early in the round. Not to mention if you go OB, you have to go to a drop zone. That's not an, an easy approach. And we're going to see how TD Tommy Bessner got tagged with a Ricky second shot there. And Looks like he might have saved old Ricky a stroke too. Yeah, got a little lucky on that one. Nate puts a nice little textbook shot up and over the hill. And this is a tricky little upshot. When you have to throw over the hill like this, uh, tell me about the touch that's required for that. It's it's all touch from there. Uh, this hole, you really only want to be a couple feet off the top of that hill coming over. If you're too high, you have a tendency to f float down the hill left. or I mean, that's, a, that's probably a perfect shot right there, but you just want to put enough touch on it. And just another example of the you know great amount of skill that all these guys have. And they're all going to be on the uh, green there. Ricky's going to have to pitch up. Uh, he will take his four, and everybody else is going to birdie it, making a tough hole look really easy yeah. early. And the lead card is off to a really hot start. All of them have birdied or better four of their first five holes. So pretty good. Can't get too much better than that. And we're coming up to a really cool hole. I'm a big fan of islands. I don't know about you. <laughs> and this is a really beautiful one. The kidney. The kidney hole, they call it. And it, this island, you throw from an elevated tee. It's only 87 meters away. But the trick of this island is it's actually slightly elevated. You've got mm -hmm. a barrier going around the green so you can easily fall off if you're not controlling the speed of your disc as it's going downhill. Yeah. As islands go, I really do like this one. I like how they put the wood around it and then it's kind of built up. Uh, it's, it's a relatively easy shot. You just throw a putter out there flat typically is what you want to do. Uh, it's, it's not too far and I do like the rule 
that if you miss the island, you go to the drop zone. I don't like, a couple years ago they had this hole and you had to continue to throw till you got on the island. And that can just really wreck your round very quickly. It sure can. We saw a couple people <clears throat> have that happen to them in Texas this year when you just have to repeatedly throw off the tee and then decide whether you're going to pitch up or continue to run at it. Yep. Uh, you see Paul's going to take the backhand putter. And That's more a little, little unorthodox shot by KJ, I felt, throwing a, a touch sidearm with a driver out there. It definitely looked odd out of his hand from that angle, but the way he's been placing his shot so far, we were talking about fairways hit. You know, you yep. can't really question it too much. He's throwing some really great shots. I'm sure Nate's kind of kicking himself there. This is the, the hole you don't want to come up short on. That's the only thing you can't do on this hole is come up short. And unfortunately he did. Looks like Cage is going to be a little farther out than the drop zone, so he's going to take a run at it. And this looks like it was is his plan all along. He just wanted to lay up, get his three. If you run away on this hole with, with four threes, you're really not going to lose too much to the to the field. And this is a tricky putt. Oh. It's just, I mean, these guys are putting from this range, and he's just going to go just past it, and you can see what happens if you miss. If you miss, you're going OB. And he's looking at a five. And here we have off the chastity belt. This is reminiscent of Japan. This is what happened, happened to, to Paul. To Paul in Japan. Playing yep. against Ricky. And then sometimes it always comes back around. Paul wanted that one right there. You could tell he wanted to get that stroke from Ricky and just couldn't cash it. Really surprised to not see a, a birdie the way these guys are playing out of anybody on the group to get a birdie on this hole. And we'll have to give a shout out to Paul's caddy today as he was telling us as he was playing this hole, he birdied it. Nice. So, nice. up and coming junior player birdieing the island. Show these guys what's up in a few years. Absolutely. We'll see what's happening. Hole seven. Now, you're telling me a little bit of a story about this. They moved the tee back. They, they moved made it the a little back. Tr trickier. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's been moved back probably 60, 70, 80 feet. So, uh, it makes it a lot harder of a par three now. I feel like it's a borderline three to four. A lot of these big arms can reach it still. But it's it's kind of like a tweener hole for me. I feel you just now you just throw a great shot out there straight, and then work with the hill as where before, you know your tee shots would come to rest on the hill. And so this is a question for you: Is this the beginning of what we're going to see? Is this like tiger proofing in golf when they started having these guys who could come on tour and hit these long balls? Are we going to have to start lengthening our nice. courses because these guys can throw? I like uh, the tiger proofing reference there. Um, Absolutely. I would love to see disc golf go to this extreme, you know, more par fours, par fives even. Uh, with disc technology, you know, discs are flying a lot farther. Kids are getting younger and throwing farther. So absolutely, they're outgrowing all these courses. And, and nobody wants to, you know, have to birdie every single hole to win a tournament, you know, by which I mean get twos. So uh, more placement shots, more like traditional golf. I'd love to see it go more that way. And it definitely puts a premium on your up shots. And we can see Ricky right here is going to have a tough one. He has to straddle out from his knee and throw a forehand shot. And that's that, that's a great shot from where he was. That, it's I mean, the backside of that hill is just as steep as the front side here. So if you don't land on the hill, you're looking at a very tricky putt. And you can't say much more than that. And these should be pretty routine layups for both KJ and Paul. And uh, Nate Doss, he's going to have a chance to get a stroke back here. Just outside the circle here, it's a very tricky putt to go for right here. Because if you miss, man, that happens right there. You and, roll away. And that's not what you want to do. You want to hit at least some part of the basket and slow your disc down. And he's going to have a comebacker. I mean, even on that, even if you hit the basket on, on a, a hole like this, it's that steep. You can still roll away. So there's no shame in laying up. If, if you're not feeling confident in your putts that day, just lay it up and then move on to the next hole. You've got to think right there that he was thinking about that five on the last hole and he had a chance to get one back on these guys and, yep. and really stay in the game. And unfortunately, you just see a rare three putt from Nate Doss. Very, very rare. And, uh, we're going to go on to hole eight. Hole eight. Nice and tight. I said in Japan, I'll say it again, this is a four digit separator. This is a hole that if your rating is four digits, you have to get it to be competitive. And this is a hole that if your rating is three digits, you'd love to get it. Yes. We're gonna start out, it's a really tight, tight tunnel as you can see, and when it gets out to the green, it widens out. So you gotta throw a really touch shot and then have a putt. It's, it's just a little bit of a, a straight shot. Most players I've seen trying to throw this hole have been trying to turn their putter over. 
And, and I felt the play here is just throw it nice and straight and, uh, and then hit your putt. Or you could get... Or you could bounce it right off a tree like KJ. Uh, you know, I can't even say whether that was luck or skill with the way he's been throwing all weekend, yep. but I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt because of it. Uh, well, you know, when, you know, when you are playing well, things tend to go your way, especially on kicks. You get so. the shooter's roll, like they say. And, uh, this, you know, you make, bring up a really good point in course design, and that's just the mark of a really well-designed course when from the tee it looks like you have to bend the shot one way or the other, and then you look at it from the opposite angle like our camera's focused, and it's just a straight shot. Absolutely. I stress that a lot when I'm, I'm teaching golf is when you're playing a course, either look backwards or even walk the course backwards. And you get to see the subtle little undulations and, and design variations that the the course designers put in. And KJ is going to float Rare one miss just KJ. over. And here's another chance. Nate's got another chance. He's bogeyed the last two holes. You know he wants this one. Yes. And there that was he pure. Is. Yep. Nice and center chain, dead center, never a doubt. We're going to go to Paul wants to get one on KJ right here. And this will be to tie it. Yeah, this that ties it up. Ties, ties it eight up. Holes. Two stroke lead has been eroded. And, uh, you know, you definitely have to hit this one if you're KJ Naibo because you need to stay close to Macbeth. You do not want to let him catch fire. When you have a player like Macbeth in the final round just tied you, you know, you really need to buckle down and start making your shots. And we're going to move on from this hole to a completely different hole. Oh, man, yeah. Hole 9, I think this hole is absolutely beautiful. This is a classic dogleg right like you'd see on a golf course. Uh, Mats Lua really did a beautiful job designing and landscaping this hole. Uh, you know, tell me about this. It's a very difficult hole. You have to throw it just dead straight, about 130 meters. And then it's straight right from there. And uh, the best play on this is to throw it pretty much like Paul Macbeth does right here, nice and straight, and then a sidearm approach. There's OB left, there's OB long, and there's jail to the right. And that's something that if you see that shot, that's a subtle shot that, that you may not understand how much touch it takes to keep it on that slight ante. It doesn't fade out, and it falls slowly to the ground. How long does it take to learn a shot like that? Oh, it takes it takes a very, very long time. And and to know what disc to throw, you know, when the wind's coming from what direction, uh, there's still there's still players that don't know how to throw that shot. A lot of I've I saw a lot of players throw roller on this hole, which I felt was not the shot at all. And you see, KJ is gonna try to work a slightly bigger any angle and just doesn't quite get a hold of it he will stay in bounds uh, he'll be just short of the ob luckily and have to really make a nice shot uh, to stay competitive on this hole it almost looks like kj's trying to force his shots right now instead of just relaxing staying in his comfort zone and throwing his own shots and that was uh, ricky wasaki through a really nice forehand that just got early on him this is a beautiful looking line right here. Uh, it just clips something and kicks left and there is OB left. And it looks like the course took the stroke back from him that it gave to him earlier when he clipped the tree and that was a really beautiful shot and I was shocked to see that result from there. I'm gonna see Another Nate. great sidearm from Nate Doss. Looks so smooth when he's throwing it. It and really does. That's the best, you know, when you can see the sidearms that are thrown smooth with touch. That Sidearms are harder to throw with that kind of touch, especially at that distance. Mm-hmm. This is a it's a very tough par four. Uh, not too many players are going to get the three on this hole. And both Nate and Paul will look at it from here. And Ricky's going to lean out and uh, try to follow up with another sidearm approach. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised he didn't try the backhand putter Anheuser shot there. And he does clip a tree, and he looks to be about a hundred feet out. Um, looks like he's giving it a little bit of a run here. And. Safe, safe to run. The OB is far enough away, and I uh, can easily tap it in for par. And that's going to be KJ for yeah, four that's... after getting his mark. Just unfortunate, leaves it short. So this is huge for Paul. He could go up by two here. Also leaves it short. So they're going to have to keep playing. 
And uh, that's the best. It's the worst and the best. Worst when you're playing is the best for the spectators. Yeah, when absolutely. you see these come to the back nine, come down to the last few holes to really take home the championship, that makes for great golf. Yeah. And that was a fantastic birdie by Nate Doss. Absolutely. He uh, played the hole very well. Overall, the lead card has played really solid, shown off some tremendous skills for a really big gallery on a really beautiful course. And we're already halfway through the round. And what do you expect to see from the rest of it? I expect to see a lot more birdies. Uh, of course, there's a great battle going on right now. Paul only has a one-stroke lead at this point. He just picked up his, you know, his other stroke on uh, on KJ, and I expect to see a battle to the end. And spoiler alert: I can tell you from filming it that you guys are going to see some awesome putts, some phenomenal play from the best players in the world. And I've had the great pleasure of talking with Eric McCabe tonight and really give an insight on one of the best courses I've ever seen in a really well-run tournament. Thank you so much for stopping by and lending your insight to us. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Absolutely not a problem. This is the European Masters 2014 at Yarva Disc Golf Park. Spin TV family, stay tuned.